That's the vegetable patch. Get the lettuce ones, you see? Get the lettuce. Do you see any wheat? You see only moss. So the good old reliable Uchpikuri, some of them damaged by the birds it seems. But the best place for them is to grow them over the compost heap. If you're starting now, that was what you had in This is Charles Doding's uh, vegetable garden in Homemakers Alhampton. This Alhampton is a little bit of a strange name. Why Al? Hampton, is it Arabic or something? Phoenicians were in this area in the past. It's Lebanese. Great color, they say. You see the solar panels on top of the building? That's such a small land and uh, they can make a food crop. And yet they have some space for what? Oh, look at these beans. Yellow climbing beans. Just because of the color. Beautiful color combinations with these charts. Can you find a single wheat here? This is an apple tree, and that's a lot of apple. All kind of chicories. Oh yeah, and French dwarf beans. And leeks as first and only crop. These are harvested. All the courgettes. This one is mulched because there are some weeds yet which are growing there through them. And dives. This is a new area, it has mulched. All the winter squashes. And this is a bed of the Jerusalem artichoke. The apple is not doing bad. Doing an apple. That's a polytunnel full of tomato. 
Let's go have a look. Mmm, the smell of basil. Mm. I think the polyton is just a little bit bigger than ours. Probably one and a half meter. And most of the tomatoes are harvested. I see one single large black Russian one. And those ones are the ones that we saw in the Italy. Uh -huh. I have a video about it. And some peppers. And a good mulch. That's what we have done also. Without a tomato and uh, aubergine in a pot on a compost heap with some squash. Into squash. Or are they? No, they look like melons. The melons I don't see two girls on the green valleys here. And every space is just overgene. I think my polyton is much better. Really, really good with my own hands. And Brazil. And some other oh bell pepper. It's really prolific. And some of that Cape gooseberry. You should do a basil patch like this. The idea is that half of the polytum is vegetables and herbs. Sure. You don't do just all polytum taken by tomato. This is a new bed that I made for the BBC. I cut and screwed the size on the day before, just resting on the ground, okay, and topped it with compost. And then planted this for BBC. I see radishes, I see puck tree, I see this uh, mustard, I see freely mustard, some, I think this is broccoli, and some freely mustard again, and then buck tree again, it's kind of oriental leaves. So that's what you will see in BBC. That is Charles Dowding's greenhouse, and you see more tomatoes here, and growing the seeds here, seedlings, and they're getting ready for it. Oh, look at the aubergines, I like that. And again, in the greenhouse, we see a balance between the amount of the rows of tomato and herbs like basil. And one row also of origin. This is the tallest origins I've seen so far. It looks like a commercial. And at the end, you see some peppers. And a big cucumber, but I don't think they are tasty. They look very tough. And here, triad bed, made in July, May 2015, for my online course, Yakun. Yakun is this kind of 
things from the Andes. Cool corn, your corn. It's a little shed. And then we come to the cabbages. Mixed with some flowers. And those are, I think, also those Andean thingies. Oka, I think. That's Oka. And then some uh, oriental leaves, then some uh, cherry, I think. And then a courgette in that corner and seedlings for the next generation. These are some of them, I think, are turnip or oriental leaves. Turnip, they can be. But he don't plant in rows, he plants in plugs. So he will, he will not waste seeds. And a little bit of this hot plant. And a proper place for drying your onions. And some seeds growing here. This is also where Charles Odin keeps his... Uh, that's a conservatory, he keeps his... Chikikuri is there. The solar panel to provide some money for the off -speed. And that is all seems to very rare to be seen properly. Some carrots, some kale. Those are the thing of the person. I'll send you an email. Hello, Charles. How are you doing? Nice to see you, Charles. Twenty thousand pound he earns. Charles Dowding, he says. Uh, after paying for all the costs and tax and everything. And considering that you will also have your food and also you have your, after all this also, this is just from the land, the vegetables and everything. But considering that, he also has courses and lectures and other things. So he, he, will, he will earn enough just to have a life. To enjoy life, you know, at the end of the day, the purpose is just doing what you like. He has done it in the in the Zimbabwe. He has done it in France, and now he's doing it. He has done it up to three years ago. He was uh, somewhere else. Then he came here and uh, settled here and just started again here. And it's just been pasteurized and that is brilliant. This is a cooking apple that he recommends. I have a one tree like this.
Okay, this is a tree which stays here for many years, and that's another one. The distance between them is about yeah, 180 to 2 meters, 180. And this one just probably lasts one season or one and a half season. So just using this space. And as you see here, there are parsnips. And they're using this space between them to grow some lovely pumpkins and winter squash. Different kind of apples and again the winter squash. Oh look at this asparagus bird. Probably I should have asked Charles to talk over this. When I was talking with him, I should have filmed it. But Charles has had some videos explaining what he is doing. But uh, seeing the vegetables in first, in first hand, you know, this gooseberry, something else. Look at this. And this giant onion, just lonely here. And a bed full of yeah, rhubarb and raspberries and onions between them using the space. That's my idea intensive gardening, horticulture. And here we are back. This stage is producing something. I experimented with many uh, pumpkins and I found Uchikikuri, Moscow, the province, and some other ones are really good to grow. It's autumn raspberries are doing now. Getting ready. Quite a large size. Love this mass of the lush asparagus. What density is He's taller than me. They're well established here. These baloti beans, they're ahead of ours. Beautiful. And this is back of the compost heaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So whatever you invest in compost, practically is not wasted. The space. And this part of it can be used for drying the onions. Okay, dig and no dig methods he's talking about Charles Dowding. Okay, he says that there is not much difference practically in the harvest, the amount of the harvest, the weight of it each year. But uh, the effort you do in digging is the extra job that you impose on yourself, so why bother? That makes logic to me because I started like that actually. But then because I had to work and do other things, life commitments, I could not really keep on the with top of the weeds. <laughs> so anyway. Mm. She looks really happy at what you're saying and you look really demonstrating. Oh, you have your baby you. now, huh? Baby, baby pressed oh, apple oh, juice. Oh, <laughs> oh that's something spicy. <laughs> I've got a few bones in there.
There are no worms there. Yeah. Organic matter. No, they are just uh, things from the apple. Mm -hmm. Uganda, no? Yes, you can see. Oh, he's growing some uh, tomatoes outside. Yeah. That's good actually to know that how they will survive. I saw an apply. Inside the polyton, inside the greenhouse, and look at this already. Really good size, and yet more continued coming. What he has done, he has kept it dry here, and then cutting the leaves and branches which are under the fruiting terrace. So that's the first terrace here. So anything under it is cut because they're not producing anything. I did it once like that. And what happened was that I ended up with blight because water was seeping from here. What's the compost toilet? Let us see how it looks inside. Oh, wood saw! Oh, so simple. And there is some... The other end. Should I lift the lead and see how it looks? You just close the toilet, put the wood chip in, and then you just let it out here and compost it. Tree. You can have a conversation, tree way conversation. Well, you said tree toilets. Say what you have and you don't have to have it. Then you can survive anywhere you go. So practically with this you don't need water. So you will have compost also. Here. Yeah. When you certainly can. Sorry. So you take it out from there, huh? Yeah, that's the little door. Well, you take that's care interesting. Of the compost toilet in Charles Dowding's home acres. Small holding. They don't keep any chicken here, so that's a good source of manure, human manure, also. So that is aerated here also, and also the fumes and gases and everything goes up like that, and back into the nature. Persian cress. About a month after sowing the seeds, it looks like this. I'm really happy about the result also this year. And uh, we had a good end of the summer, it seems. We had the rocket, wild rocket. That's a typical leaf of a Persian crest. Also, it was good for a spin.
This is a book very close to my heart. It's How to Grow Winter Vegetables by Charles Dowding. Charles Dowding is a famous author now in the UK that promotes uh, no grow Nordic uh, uh, organic uh, method of gardening. He has personally signed the book for me. And uh, as you see here, and um, I used to read this book very close to my heart, of course. I used to read it when I was uh, traveling on train to London and uh, buses and everything. When I was traveling, just uh, instead of looking at the window, doom and gloom of the London weather, uh, I found uh, very interesting stuff in the in this book. Uh, always wanted to grow things in the winter beyond the traditional stuff that you grow. Uh, like Brussels sprouts and other things that people do. And uh, I wanted to know how can I do it better. I don't like to leave the land idle. In the UK, people have allotment. Allotment means a piece of land that you get from the council to grow or food for your family. And it's kind of a small holding or a homestead way of life, a little farm, smaller scale farm. Uh, and you pay rent for that, a uh, minimal amount, it's not much. And uh, you easily can uh, can earn more than what you pay for that by just growing and saving the money on this stuff. And uh, this book is published in 2011, and I think about in 2012. And uh, the content of the winter's potential, a forgotten season, a winter scene, preparing for winter... Then it comes to the sowing, planting, and growing calendar, what you can grow in different months. Uh, it means many times you actually start uh, growing things for winter, not in the actual winter itself, because winter is not a season for much growth. You have to start it in August, in July, sometimes in June. And then when the plants are big enough in the, and you have planted them, of course, they will give you the crop in the winter, in the cold season, when there is no other uh, vegetables to grow. And what I found uh, very interesting is all these recommendations, winter harvest, how to restore your harvest, actually, winter vegetables undercover. Undercover means in the greenhouse or a polytunnel. And, uh, yeah, it has uh, all these sections that you see. And what it, it, one of the most uh, heartfelt information I, felt, I found here was that it says during the late December to the early February, the plants practically stop growing and I was noticing that myself and I just found the evidence for that what what by what he actually says on this and um, the plants actually store to grow the reason is the light levels are very low although you can provide heat but the light level is a is a final condition that determines how much uh, crop you will have how much growth the plants will put so in December up to January uh, the plants are at the uh, lowest uh, growth level ever, if any growth. The book is in the 232 pages. It is sold in the UK by uh, Green Books, or you can buy and find it in the YouTube, in the um, ABE Books, or Amazon, other websites, secondhand even. Uh, originally it was 14.95. Uh, you can buy it probably cheaper. I bought it actually cheaper than this price. Probably about, about eight pound or something. You can buy it cheaper. Second hand or first hand even. Uh, it's a very good book. I must say the wealth of information in it and how you can do. For example, of course, you cannot grow winter, you cannot grow winter, summer squash, winter squash in the winter. But when you store them, you can use them. And that's what I have done. I will show you. Okay, this is some of the summer squash. This one is summer squash and it's very hardy. Scalp squash, you may call it. And uh, some winter squash. This one is also, again, summer squash. This is a butternut squash. And all kinds of... This, I, have, I have even a marrow at this time of the year. And this is also a mar marrow. Courgette, which has grown to be big enough to be a marrow. This is a Lebanese one. This is a stripy one, I think, from the Italy they are. And this is a... I think this is a Turk turban. I have it more than one year now. So these are the things that you can grow in the winter. And you grow in the summer, of course, uh, and uh, store them for the winter use. But if you have sown something earlier in the month, you can start to use them, harvest them during the cold months of the winter. And also during the winter, at this time of the year, January, December, you can actually grow other things, broad beans, you know that already. Garlics you can plant, 
and uh, anything that is called Horsi. Uh, what I notice is the good list of the companies that you can actually go and buy the uh, good seats in the UK, of course. I don't know, in the United States you can access this publications and one of the best places that I found was this CN seats here and extremely wide range I must say that 10 times more seat than any other place and the price is almost two-thirds of the very well anywhere else that you can find and they actually provide for the commercial use but they have a uh, also a small amount of sale to the uh, yes uh, to the retail as a retail to the normal people you can find about the other things also where to source them and uh, yeah winter is a good time for starting onions you can start your sweet peas flowers it's very, very nice fragrance flowers that you people grow in britain mostly i don't know what it is in america or uh, then after winter also you can let some of the plants to actually go to seed like this lettuce here keep the seeds for your own because the seeds that you actually grow yourself they're, they're fresh they have more viability the vitality in them and they grow better and quicker and they give a better crop you can grow peas pea shoots in pea shoots even in home you can do it buy cheap peas green peas and just use them this is the time of the year that you can start to mulch your land as Charles Doding is showing uh, that's what I do I do mulch with the my own compost or manure or I use what is uh, available as leaf mold. Very good informative book. It's inspiring. When you read it, you want to go out and do do the actual stuff. And uh, what is better than this? Cheap and cheerful. Uh, as I told, this is 231 pages of information. In the January 2017 uh, issue of the country small holding, a magazine I found a uh, notice an article written by Charles Doding the pioneer of the Nordic method popularized of course Nordic existed before that but he has popularized it more than anybody else at this, at this decade and uh, Charles Doding shows his results compares growth in the same plants in dog and dog, dog soil during 2016 Kale sown in May, planted in June, and you see the results here. So you have to read it actually. The process, the results, compost is much more than fertilizer. Yeah, compost is much more than fertilizer. It's actually the mulch. It also is a medium that the plant can give uh, roots. And the results are here. This is the, I suppose, this is the, uh, on the left is a, uh, dog bed and this is on dog bed of course you see the parsnip so the difference talk for itself this is on dog and that is dog and all the results are presented here also and the kale you see a kale here you see another kale here on dog bed is more upright so in this case this is the on dog one and this is the dog one very interesting. You have to read it, really. That's very interesting results. Uh, he has done the 12 vegetables, the results of them presented here, which is in this table. And as you see, total kilogram in the dog and on dog bed, you see about a 10 kilogram difference between them. Of course, these are not verified by any independent source. So it's not peer reviewed or anything, but just uh, the result he claims. What I mean is that scientifically it's not proved, it's not peer reviewed. This is what he says. And okay, at the moment, this is kind of business. So he has courses, he sells books and uh, writes books and sells them, and uh, online courses, uh, uh, residential courses. I mean, you come there and see see the actual garden that he has so this is the result he claims nobody else has verified it is not validated by peer review scientifically when we say that it should be by peer reviewed it should be repeat repeatable one of the one of the basics of science is that the results should be repeatable 
if you just one case or one person says and it just will be something like experience you cannot really base on that something but if others can reach the same results repeating the same experiments and re reaching the same results gradually can be seen as a scientific uh, achievement scientific fact that's how the science works not what you create claim. a new vegetable garden, producing a beautiful and fruitful garden from scratch. Charles Dowding, due to private issues that he had in his life, in 2013, I think, or 14, started a new garden. He moved out of the old garden that he had with his family, started a new life somewhere else in Somerset, and bought a new land, and then uh, started to create a garden the way that he started in his previous site. You may find uh, about that previous whole, uh, garden that he had in his other's book. But this is a book that uh, relates just to how he created that garden. Um, what I like about the book is that, first of all, it's full of pictures. Uh, the way that he done his uh, recreation of a garden... Then the second thing is that he's, uh, he's writing about things that he has done himself. He's not talking about like this. What is that uh, lady? Klein, Kristen Klein or something. Iris Fowler and others. Talking about uh, something which is not related really to, to them. It's just general knowledge. You can pick it from anywhere in any book and just uh, write about it. Kristen Klein, I think, is her name. It just, to me, seems like a, or Alan Titmarsh and others. They're very plasticky, like very industrialized as if. They just pick things from here and there, then, then make it as if it looks as if they have done it. It's their own contribution, which is not true. But uh, Charles Dodding, although he has uh, his technique of the Nordic gardening, looks very similar to what people are doing here in England. I've seen a lot of... Uh, we do, uh, that is the raised bed. And I did also the Nordic method in the first year without even knowing that there is such a method, but I just saw that the, my land is full of weeds. Uh, first, I removed the bigger weeds, then for the smaller ones, I thought that oh, I cannot really cope with all that. I covered it with a thick layer of uh, mulch, this thick. Uh, my mulch was a uh, uh, compost that I had in the allotment from the previous owner. And I spread it over that, and that worked as a mulch. It stopped the weeds growing vigorously, and I, the whatever grew, I could easily manage and uh, pull them out. So Charles Dodding has uh, basically suggested such things. He experiments with different kind of mulch, of course, uh, cardboard, paper, um, compost, um, homegrown compost, proprietary compost, the one that you buy from the companies and nurseries and uh, manure, different kind of manures and also and uh, and he discusses the result that he had from those experiments. The book uh, is published in 2000 uh, I'm right where is the publication date? In 2015 yeah and uh, for the first time, one of his books is in the hardcover, so that's a good good addition. He had two more books in the hardcover, I should say, actually. But this is, a, this is a real hardcover with real material related to gardening. So it has two parts, contents. Then part one is about clearing ground and preparing soil. Part two, sowing and growing. I really like the, this book. I take it with me wherever I'm going for a short journey, or long journey even. Uh, I take the book with me in my uh, uh, luggage and I uh, start to read it. Really enjoyed reading this. Practically because it inspires me. It just makes me feel that, oh yeah, I have to go on to do this myself also. Many of it uh, is common knowledge, common sense, but uh, there's some gems in this. I don't approve some parts of the thing, which has not he has not discussed it here, but you know, if you look, look in his website, Charles Doding talks about something called biodynamics, which doesn't look anything. It's not scientific, it's not science, it's just kind of practically magic. But, but he, has not, he has not touched those things. Biodynamic to them, the way that they, they describe it in the 
pub in this book and publications is uh, if you think there's something innocent about the lunar cycles and the phases of the moon planting according to phases of the moon and so but when you go to the depth of the biodynamic it's magic they believe in the some magic magical things and uh, they bury things they have rituals they have yeah. It's also a business, you know, they say 500, something called 500 is a kind of liquid that they do and they, they do uh, spreading around the farm in four corners, they bury a horn and uh, you know, silly stuff. But uh, it cannot be convincing that how, how this these um, rituals affects your land but not the neighboring land or if there's a field for it, how far that field uh, is uh, reaching like the field of uh, you know gravity or electromagnetic field it must have a range and does it change with the reverses uh, uh, reverse of the distance and uh, yes yeah, square square reverse of a square uh, reverse of the distance squared anyway whatever uh, this is about those those things it describes sometimes uh, in some parts what you can do in different seasons how you can uh, uh, protect your what kind of mulch you can use if you start from the zero how to actually start digging cover your ground then uh, use it as a mulch and uh, quite inspiring I like the way that he, he has given us also some cards the way that he has described it is I really like it. The way that he has done it himself and he's talking about what he has done actually himself is really uh, inspiring. You don't find books by people who have done the thing and then they talk about their experience. Charles Oding is one of those people who does this. Uh, by the way, when I was talking with him, he told that he likes actually Jeremy Corbyn, so we can call him probably in a way supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, he's a decent guy, nice, pleasant guy, and a decent human being, and uh, a good gardener. He, he, he uses garden for growing salad leaves for selling to the restaurants. He has videos about it on YouTube, you can watch, uh, find them and watch them. And also he makes uh, salad uh, vegetable boxes and sell it. And also he has a lot of lectures, of course he's, he writes books and sells his books. His books are selling well.